tonight, ballot bewilderment. We're digging into the best ways to make sure that your vote is tallied in Minnesota. And idle no more. U.S. Steel is looking to reopen an Iron Range mine shuttered by the pandemic. Plus, the final push. Both presidential candidates are touring the Midwest today, making a final plea to voters. From CBS3 Duluth, this is the CBS3 News at 6. Good evening, I'm Natalie Grant. Kristen and Tony are off tonight. Thanks for joining us. There is a lot of confusion tonight about what to do with your mail-in ballots in Minnesota. This comes after Thursday night's ruling that all ballots must be received by the clerk's office no later than 8 p.m. on Election Day. Voters are scrambling today to get their, ba their ballots in on time. CBS 3's Leanne Valdez explains everything you need to know if you haven't voted yet. One by one, voters filed into Duluth City Hall Friday to make sure their voices are heard. Every vote counts. Some were motivated to vote early and drop off their absentee ballot after Minnesota's 8th Circuit Court of Appeals ruled Thursday all ballots must be received by the clerks no later than 8 p.m. on Election Day. Originally, that deadline was a week later. I was a little bit worried that I wasn't going to be able to get in. We were planning on mailing it, but because of that last night, um, we decided to mail or put it in the box today. Something the city of Duluth is urging the rest of the community to do. Definitely want you to return that as soon as possible. If you still have an absentee ballot, the city of Duluth says you should return the ballot to City Hall by hand to make sure it is received in time to be counted. You can come into City Hall. We're open 8 to 4.30 today, tomorrow, and 8 to 5 on Monday. You can also drop it off at the 24-7 City Hall drive-up drop box located off the 2nd Street parking lot. If you decide last minute you'd rather vote in person, you can do that too. If you did receive a mail ballot and you've decided that you don't want to return that mail ballot, you can still go vote in person. You can come to City Hall and vote in person here, or you can go to your polling location on Election Day. The city says they have protocols in place to make sure someone's vote doesn't get counted twice. Each mail ballot is actually digitally coded, and so we track that ballot through all the processes. Another thing to remember, if you have an absentee ballot and decide to bring it in on Election Day, it has to be brought to Duluth City Hall before 3 p.m. If it's getting to City Hall or any other voting place by mail, the cutoff for that is at 8 p.m. Meanwhile, in-person voting has ended in Wisconsin today, but you still have a chance to make your voice heard. You can bring your absentee ballot to a local drop box. You can also vote in person at a polling place on Election Day. Superior will have five polling places open with COVID-19 safety precautions in place. But no matter what, all ballots in Wisconsin have to be received by 8 p.m. on Tuesday. Meteorologist Dave Anderson joins us for a quick look at the weather. You know, we have a warmer, kind of warm spell coming up here. Yeah, and we need it, too, because it's been brisk around the area the last couple chilly. of days. <laughs> yeah, and it was a little bit chilly around the Ely area this morning where they dipped into the single digits. And that was cool enough air over warm enough water to create a little puff of sea smoke. Ooh on Burnside Lake, just north of town along the Echo Trail. And so if you take a look across the bay there uh, towards the land and the island, you see a little bit of that Arctic sea smoke. So it's not just for Lake Superior. Now, precip's coming our way for tomorrow, and it's not just for northern Minnesota. It's for everybody. Looks like we have a 30% chance of a rain-snow mix coming north of Duluth tomorrow and a 30% chance for rain for the rest of the region. And that may be the only shot at precip we get for the next week because once we shake off the chance for a little bit of snow, which might try to stick near the Ely area, I'll show you a chart on how much we'll try later on, but we get at the weekend forecast here, which shows a bit of a warm-up for Saturday, so low temp around 30 tonight, it's getting warmer. 42 for the high tomorrow with that precip chance, that's getting warmer. Sunday will stumble a little bit and fall back into the 30s, but that's just a chance to regroup for a warm spell that could begin on Monday, last the rest of the week, and take a couple of days towards 50 degrees. How long that'll stick around is something I'll talk about in more detail just a little bit later here in the newscast. All right. Thanks, Dave.
hundreds of workers could soon be heading back to the only Iron Range mine still idled amid the pandemic. Now, in a conference call today, U.S. steel leaders say that they are looking towards restarting KeyTac. They say that there was some improvement in the company's third quarter earnings report. The iron ore pellet facility in Kiwan shut down six months ago due to impacts on demand for steel. U.S. Steel's president and CEO's message this morning was layered with optimism. We believe market strength will continue through the first quarter of 2021. We believe market conditions can last and are confident about our performance for the rest of the year. About 375 employees have been laid off while, mines, while the mine sits idle, while other Iron Range mines also shut down and laid off workers during the pandemic. Keytac is the only one that hasn't come back online. The U.S. has hit another record number of COVID-19 cases in a single day. So far, more than 88,000 new cases were reported on Thursday. That's based on data from John Hopkins University. It broke the previous record from just six days ago. On October 23rd, close to 84,000 cases were reported. The virus is on the rise across the United States. 41 states saw at least 10% more cases this past week compared to the previous week. Meanwhile, in Minnesota, they have broken another daily COVID-19 case record. Health experts reported a single-day high of nearly 3,200 new coronavirus infections. 18 more people died. The state also reported nearly 740 hospitalizations, which is another single-day high. Almost 180 people are in intensive care. The number that guides schools in deciding how students will learn during the pandemic made a big jump in greater St. Louis County this week. Now, every Thursday, St. Louis County puts out an updated case per 10,000 residents. That number for schools outside the Duluth area went from 25 last week to 37 this week. Now, with those numbers, the state recommends hybrid learning for elementary students and distance learning for high schoolers. State guidance says that anything above a 50 triggers distance learning for all students. Mountain Iron High School was also added to a list of schools the state is currently monitoring, monitoring for COVID cases. That district is just, is just finishing a two-week distance learning period. Now, Two Harbors High School will also start distance learning starting on Monday. It's expected to last two weeks. The case rate in Duluth is above 30 for the fourth straight week. It was about 32 last week and above 34 this week. Now today, Duluth school leaders announced that the current learning model will continue through December. That's hybrid learning for elementary students and distance for secondary students. After school activities like athletics will continue for now. Duluth Superintendent John Magus says that they are prepared to move entirely distance learning and pause after school activities if these cases keep climbing. Wisconsin is opening more COVID-19 testing sites to help deal with the state's surge in coronavirus cases. Governor Tony Evers says that the state's health department will open 71 more community testing sites through December 10th. Wisconsin National Guard troops will staff the sites and administer tests, which will be free and open to the public. While the sites will be able to test up to 48,000 people per week, Governor Evers says that the widespread testing is only part of the solution. Testing is not a silver bullet for stopping this virus. It's a supplement, not a replacement for all the mitigation efforts we need to have in place to stop the spread and save lives. Now, these new testing sites will be funded through federal coronavirus relief dollars. In the final days before the election, both presidential candidates are spending some serious time in Minnesota and Wisconsin. After a Waterford, Michigan visit this afternoon, President Donald Trump traveled to Green Bay. He spoke to a crowd of hundreds with no apparent social distancing. Some seem to be wearing masks. He criticized Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden and his response to and his plans for handling the pandemic, rather. Trump had also acknowledged the key role Battleground Wisconsin plays in this race. We win this state, you know what? It's over. We win Wisconsin. I've treated Wisconsin very well. Four days from now, we're going to win this state, and we are going to win four more beautiful years in the world. Now, hours before the rally, former Packers quarterback Brett Favre announced his endorsement for Trump and was a special guest at the event.
Meanwhile, Biden spoke at this drive-in rally in St. Paul this afternoon. Amid honking instead of cheering, Biden called for Minnesotans to vote and de vote in DFLers to the state Senate. He also shared his plans for affordable health care. He says he wants to make a that a guarantee for all Americans. It's unconscionable to Donald Trump. From the day he got elected to right now, he's fighting in court to rip that peace of mind away from tens of millions of Americans. But we're not going to let him do it. Biden will also speak in Milwaukee tonight around 6.30. He was also in Des Moines earlier today. After sitting empty since a tragic fire last year, there are new plans for a lot where the Adas Israel Synagogue used to stand in Duluth. Now, according to the executive director of St. Anne's, the assisted living facility bought the land. They're, lo they're located on the same block on the corner of East 3rd Street and North 3rd Avenue East in the city's hillside neighborhood. Now, while the details of the sale, including price, have not been shared yet, St. Anne's leaders tell us that negotiations took several months. Right now, St. Anne's plans to use the space for more parking. However, because of the impacts of COVID-19, the project won't start for at least two years. We also reached out to the Adas Israel leaders, but did not hear back by news time. Earlier this year, synagogue reps said that they have been holding small services outside at different homes, but are considering new options for the winter months. Still to come on live local CBS 3, headed to Prime. A locally produced documentary is set to start streaming on Amazon. Details coming up next. Today's high hit 40 degrees. That's warmer than it was yesterday, but still five degrees shy of normal. We'll get a little bit closer to normal tomorrow along with the chance for some rain. Then Sunday, well, we'll back up a little bit temperature wise, but that could set the stage for a warm spell beginning by Monday. We'll talk about the timeline of those temperature trends coming up after our break. Watch Jeopardy at 430, followed by CBS 3 Live at 5 on Live Local CBS 3. It isn't always easy living in the Northland. Up here, we have to count on our neighbors and let them know they can always count on us. I have the honor of serving our community in the State Assembly. Down there, I'm fighting to make health care more affordable and broadband more accessible. My opponent has other ideas. He wants to help companies like Foxconn give tax cuts and bailouts to billionaires, leaving us behind. I'm Beth Myers, and you can always count on me. At Super One Foods, you'll find more than just low prices and better choices. You'll find friendly faces like ours, working hard to save you money. Super One has a tireless commitment to quality and freshness and a goal of delivering five-star service to every customer to bring the absolute best value to your shopping experience. Check out these specials available at all Super One locations going on now. So stop into the Super One Foods right in your neighborhood. Super One Foods, serving you with low prices and better choices. All sportsmen, regardless of your passion, run the risk of transporting aquatic invaders, so it's important. Always clean, drain, and dry. Waterfall hunting is a passion for many, but it puts us into close contact with a lot of vegetation and bottom materials. This means we need to stay hyper-vigilant against the spread of nuisance invaders like Eurasian water milfoil and zebra mussels, to name a few. Start by clearing all vegetation and sediment from your blind, decoys, push poles and anything else that could harbor an invasive organism. Do a thorough clean off of your boat and trailer, starting at the bow and working your way to the back. Drain bilge and live well water by pulling plugs and fully trim the motor down to drain water from the outboard cooling system. Take it a step further at home and clean select gear with the hose and brush. You can't get everything at the access. Lastly, make sure your clothing and equipment have dried before going somewhere new. What do you get when you add care from Essentia Health and coverage from UCARE? Essentia Care, now available for a more affordable price. Essentia Care's Medicare Advantage plans have premiums that start at $0 per month in select counties. You'll be able to see your Essentia Health provider at our 15 hospitals and 71 clinics. Plus, Essentia Care plans allow you the freedom to see any provider who accepts Medicare. Compare and shop plans at ucare.org slash Essentia Care. It is the question that matters the most. ¿Dónde está? That takes you behind the story. Robert. It drives everything we do. It is the foundation of trust. Who did all of this? And the truth that propels us forward. What did you make of that? It is the question. 
one word, three letters long. And without it, our purpose, that's news, and our freedom fade. This is why. Watch Jeopardy at 4.30, followed by CBS 3 Live at 5 on Live Local CBS 3. Season 2 is here. The Kelly Clarkson Show, weekdays at 3 on CBS 3. Now, the CBS 3 Duluth WeatherMax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. Let's talk about this morning's temperatures because for some towns they improved. Like uh, here in the Twin Ports, 20 degrees. That wasn't so bad, but Ely, like we mentioned, was down to 7. That's why up on Burnside there they had a little Arctic sea smoke popping up. 18 International Falls, not so bad either. A little bit cool towards Silver Bay and Ashland, but frankly we're going to warm up fairly nicely tomorrow. A southerly wind is going to send temperatures up, but it's also going to increase clouds and as well increased chances for some precip. We'll talk about what flavor could be peppering our region here in just a bit, but right now we set the stage with our current conditions from Duluth International. It's 35, relative humidity 72 percent, south winds going five miles per hour, and the air pressure is on the higher side at 30.23 inches of mercury. That's why we had a fair amount of sunshine for much of the area today, but a low tomorrow is what's going to increase the clouds and uh, that'll chase away the sun until Sunday when it comes back in full force. Current temperature in Waters meets 31. We have 34 for Ironwood, 37 Ashland and Hayward, and Superior as well. Moose Lake's in that mix, and so is Two Harbors. So looks like the mode or most common number today is 37 degrees. Though 34 is going to give it a run. 34 inhibiting Ely, Orr, and Big Fork. High temps tomorrow could go as warm as 42, 45 degrees, getting much closer to normal. And then next week, we get even warmer than normal. We could be in the 50s for a couple of days. I'll talk about those days in just a bit. Right now, we look at the current Doppler map for our region. And today was a mixture of a little bit of cloud filtering in between bouts of sunshine. So it was really a rather pleasant and beautiful day. And when the sun was around, it felt a lot warmer than the 40 or so that we received. Tomorrow, I think we are going to receive temperatures towards 45. So it'll be getting warmer, thanks to the warm front here. But now this low pressure system coming aboard for Saturday. Saturday, we'll be packing a 30% chance for precip. And north of Duluth towards the Iron Ranges and especially around the Canadian border could be some light snow. For the rest of us, we're looking at a chance for some rain. Some of that snow just might try to stick Saturday afternoon into early Sunday morning. So running from International Falls through to Orr and over towards Bike, places like that, Ely area, Winton, Isabella, you just might get an inch or so trying to stick, the rest of us getting the rain. And then once we get into next week, even as early as Sunday, it clears up, dries up, and starts to warm up. Sunday may not, but Monday just might. Taking a look now at the forecast tonight, Minnesota low temps will be near 30. Partly cloudy sky is what we get. It'll be partly cloudy for Wisconsin with lows there near 30, 31 for the Upper Peninsula. And to tomorrow for Wisconsin and the UP, 30% chance for rain, highs in the mid-40s. That's pretty close to normal. Minnesota highs from 40 to 45, not so far off the mark from normal, and a 30% chance for mix and light snow up north. Then the change will come on Sunday. It cools down for one day back to the 30s, but the sun comes around, and then temperatures nose upwards. 45 Monday, 50 to 55 Tuesday into Wednesday, still holding on to the 50s on Thursday and maybe settling back to normal mid-40s by next Friday. All right, thanks, Dave. Piedmont students got out of the classroom today to conduct a special experiment and had some fun while doing it. Piedmont fifth graders collected data from high altitude weather balloons, the same ones that space researchers used. The launch was part of a project sponsored by St. Louis County, Essentia, Duluth Air Show organizers, and more. Now, as one sixth grade teacher explained, it's all to get kids excited about science. We want to get the kids excited, right? We want to get them excited about science and about learning and about doing experiments. And uh, I think that's exactly what happened. As you can see, the kids are super excited, uh, super pumped to be out here. Well, not having enough helium at first, the team got the balloon off the ground. The balloons are expected to float 120,000 feet into the Earth's stratosphere. They're equipped with cameras, weather computers, GPS tracking, and more.
A local documentary is headed to Amazon Prime. Outsource, the new Wisconsin idea, takes a look at the 2017 program suspensions at the University of Wisconsin-Superior. The immediate aftermath and the path the university took to reach their decision. Director Megan McGarvey says that her team wanted to provide a time capsule of the event to show what the experience was truly like. The film will be available to stream or rent on Amazon Video starting tomorrow. Ahead in sports, remembering a hockey icon. Kelly Hinseth is in with the local connection next. Northwest Outlet is number one when it comes to kids' winter clothing from the North Face and Columbia. CBS3 live cams are brought to you by Kohler Chevrolet Buick GMC Cadillac. You're not just getting a car, you're getting Kohler. Now at Home Furniture, get 7% tax relief savings on purchases of $4.99 or more. Plus, zero down, no interest financing until 2022. And free no-contact shipping on orders $4.99 or more. Tax relief savings going on now at Home Furniture. Hello, I'm Steve Little with Bath Planet. For the month of October, we are offering free installation for bathtubs, showers, safety tubs, and surrounds. Get your dream bathroom with free installation. As always, you can still get one of our great financing options for low monthly payments or zero down, zero interest, and zero payments until 2022. This offer ends October 31st, so call us today or go online to book your appointment to take advantage of this amazing offer. Bath Planet, out of this world service, down to earth price. We've been through a lot this year, and it all feels so personal. Your health and your family's well-being, the businesses you built, your kids' education. So many of you have told me that you want us to move forward, get this virus under control, rebuild American manufacturing, support innovation and small businesses, make America work for all of us. I'm Tina Smith, and I approve this message because we get it done when we work together. Red Zone Live is the perfect opportunity to get all of your local high school football in one place. And you're getting perspective and analysis from a former player himself, right Neil? That's right Kelly, I played four years in the high school level and four years in the college level. You can't help but feed off the energy of all these schools and all these athletes. I'm Kelly Hinsa. And I'm Neil Viersba. You can watch Red Zone Live following the news every Friday night during the high school football season starting at 1020 on CBS3. I'm Dr. Jason Huang, and I'm a vascular surgeon at St. Luke's. I'm a very visual learner, and so if I can simplify it and draw it out for me, then I can do that for a patient and really help translate the what, the how, and the why, and then what they can expect before, during, and after an operation. And I really find an immense amount of satisfaction in being able to help my patients. But we have an entire team here, not just myself, that is completely dedicated to taking care of you and getting you through this. It isn't always easy living in the Northland. Up here, we have to count on our neighbors and let them know they can always count on us. I have the honor of serving our community in the State Assembly. Down there, I'm fighting to make health care more affordable and broadband more accessible. My opponent has other ideas. He wants to help companies like Foxconn give tax cuts and bailouts to billionaires, leaving us behind. I'm Beth Myers, and you can always count on me. Now at Home Sleep Express, spend $4.99 or more and get tax relief savings of 7% on Luxuria, Thomas Cole, and Heirloom mattresses. This Euro Top Queen mattress now just $4.64 and free no-contact shipping. Tax relief savings now at Home Sleep Express. Season 2 is here. The Kelly Clarkson Show, weekdays at 3 on CBS3. Now, CBS3 Sports with Kelly Hinson. We're now just two days away from Border Battle 2.0. The Vikings looking to get revenge against the Green Bay Packers after their week one performance. Two teams trending in two different directions. Minnesota coming in at one and five. Green Bay at five and one. In their second year under head coach Matt LaFleur, the Packers have yet to lose a division game and are a perfect eight and oh. The Vikings path to an upset will likely come from the turnover margin. Minnesota is minus seven in turnover ratio, the third worst in the league. Kirk Cousins has thrown 10 interceptions in six games. And it doesn't help the injury report. Mike Hughes has been placed on IR, and his fellow cornerback Holden Hill is out. ESPN is also reporting that Dalvin Cook is likely to 
play, although he's listed as questionable. Linebacker Todd Davis has been placed on the COVID-19 reserve list. On the Packers side, Aaron Jones and Kevin King are out one more week. All pro tackle David Bakhtiari is questionable, as is kicker Mason Crosby. Well, a story that has been developing all week in the world of college hockey. Mitchell Miller, an 18-year-old University of North Dakota player who showed a promising future as a fourth-round draft pick of the NHL, was renounced by his NHL team yesterday. Well, today the University of North Dakota hockey program has announced that they are parting ways with the freshman as well. The decision comes four days after the Arizona Republic published an article detailing Miller's assault of a black classmate, Isaiah Meyer Crothers, when the two were in middle school. UND President Andrew Armacos wrote in a letter that Miller is welcome to remain a student at the university. Longtime college hockey fans will know the name Travis Roy, who was paralyzed after taking one shift with Boston University back in 1995 against North Dakota. He passed away yesterday and was 45 years old. Roy was paralyzed from the neck down just 11 seconds into his freshman debut with the Terriers at Walter Brown Arena on October 20th, 1995, a game in which he was facing now UMD head coach Scott Sandlin, who was an assistant with the Sioux in his second year. I just remember being on the bench because I was coaching the D and it just kind of happened so quick in the corner. He went to uh, he went to hit one of our players and lost his balance and, and went in. And when he didn't get up, everyone, you know, you don't know the severity of it at the time. And we still didn't until the end of the game, but you could tell it had a, a major effect on both teams. And really, I think we ended up losing the game, but that was inconsequential compared to what happened and, and the, the end result of and, and, and Travis's injuries. And while the accident changed his life forever, Roy decided to focus his efforts on helping others with spinal cord injuries as an activist and a spokesman. He was an athlete. He's a competitor. I mean, he's gonna he's gonna fight and and do everything he can to to try and number one, you know, maybe live a normal life. But uh, I just think being the advocate that he was and, and just, uh, you know, he started a foundation. He can't say enough about what he did and just a good person too. I mean, when you get a chance to meet him, he was always smiling. He was positive. He brought a lot of energy to, to wherever he was. That's going to do it for sports for now. We'll more here back to 10 at 10, including high school football and Red Zone Live. But for now, Natalie, I'll send it back to you at the desk. All right. Thanks, Kelly. And coming up later tonight, after gray wolves were removed from the endangered species list in most United States, tonight we're hearing from a farmer who says he will now be able to protect his livestock as well as from, from wolf, ad, wolf advocacy organization, who says that this poses a threat to the wolf population. Well, before we go, a famous Halloween display in California found a way to run safely this year during the pandemic. The Pirates of Immersion Attraction is an annual October tradition. Visitors to keep the visitors to keep the attraction used to creep through narrow hallways while ghosts and goblins jumped at, out at close quarters. Now organizers thought they were going to have to cancel, but they've gotten a coronavirus ramp instead. Now the spook show is watched from inside visitors' vehicles as they wind their way through the spook-filled uh, spook route. It means that guests can maintain social distancing from the safety of their slow-moving cars. Very fun, Dave. Can we get a last look at the forecast here? All right, let's do that. We'll take a look at the seven-day and four trick-or-treaters on Saturday around our area who might venture out to trunk or treats that are happening all over the place. There's a chance for a little bit of rain and snow mix. All right, thanks, Dave. We'll see you right back.